Andrea Fontana Beauty. Today I'm going to be talking about a topic that is very highly requested. It's the number one thing that I get questions about as a makeup artist and an esthetician. And as many of you know, I am obsessed with eyebrows. They are probably one of the most important parts of the makeup look to me. I just, probably if I had to choose, it would be skin or brows. Those are my most important and today I'm gonna to be sharing with you five tips to getting your dream brows. I really found my true love for brows when I worked for Benefit Cosmetics. I was an arch expert for them and that's when I really realized how much I love brows and I really honed my craft. Now at this point I've probably done thousands of eyebrows and I am still obsessed with them. So, so many of you come to me and you send me messages asking how do I fill my brows in? What do I do if I have a, you know, a patch or a scar? What's your favorite brow product? What do you do? How do I grow them in? I used to joke that I put people in brow rehab because I really truly believe there's certain things you need to do if you want to try to regrow or reshape your eyebrows. So since I'm no longer doing everybody's eyebrows, I wanted to share some tips with you so that if you are going in to get your next brow wax or whatever you might do, you can keep these tips in mind and really try to get the brows of your dreams. Brows are so important, I swear. Brows can make you look more awake, they can make you look younger, they can truly open up your eyes, they can accentuate your eye color, your eyeshadow, your whole makeup look. Like, if you've never filled your brows in, you'd be surprised how much different it can make you look. It's so, so important. So I hope you keep watching and you enjoy this video. Also, if you have questions about the makeup that I'm wearing right now, in my previous video, I did a first impressions makeup look using the products that I purchased in my Ulta and Sephora spring sales makeup haul. So if you wanna see, I did the exact same look, I just did different eyeshadows from the same eyeshadow palette that I bought. Um, they're a little, it's a little rosier instead of so bronze, but that whole, everything I used, except for the lip color. I don't have anything on my lips right now, but other than that, everything is the exact same. So I will link that down below, or you can look at my previous video and that will show you everything that's on my face right now. So let's get started with my five tips. Okay, so tip number one is going to be to find your brow person. Do your research, get on social media, look in your area, get on Google, ask your friends, ask people you know that are obsessed with makeup. Find a person make sure they have really good brows because this is my billboard and I think so many people trust me because they like my brows. So always make sure that you love the brows of the person who you're going to. Going along with that as well, you want to make sure that they are very experienced. If they have an Instagram, check out their previous work. There's so many ways for you to see who, with services, who does what, what their work looks like. So do your research. I mean, you wanna make sure that you have somebody that really listens to you, that really, if you want to reshape and regrow your brows, they have to kind of believe and know what to do in that process, if that makes sense. If, talk a lot with them. For me, when I would see a new client and it would be the first time, I spent a lot more time discussing my whole process, my ideas for growth, all of that. So you wanna make sure that they are listening to you and that they are really doing what you have in mind. So in same with like the rest of the tips that I'm going to be giving you, make sure that they are kind of able to go with that and they're not going to give you the same eyebrow on everybody. I think the real reason that I was so successful as a brow expert was because I was able to really listen to people, see what they wanted and take the brow that they have and really improve that. You cannot give the same brow to every single person. You have to go off of what they have. So it's really important that your brow artist can make sure that they are creating the best look for you because everybody's different. So always keep that in mind. You might have to try a few people or when you're going in, if you're not quite sure, the first time, ask them to go really conservative, like to just clean up your brows, just so you can kind of see their process and see what they do, you know, how clean they are, what are they doing, are they, um, are they mapping your brows? That's really huge. If you really want your brows mapped, which I highly recommend, go to a benefit arch expert because you have to, they all will brow map you. So that's really important, I think, to reshaping, but we'll get into that more in a little bit. So yeah, that's tip number one. Do your research, 
find your person. To all my people watching that I was their person, I love you all and thank you for trusting me. So tip number two kind of goes before, well, once you find your person, you need to grow your brows in for one to two months, depending on how fast they grow. Mine grow pretty quickly, so I would say one month for me. But know how long you've let them grow and make it at least a month. There is no point to going into a new person who you want to reshape, regrow your brows, and giving them nothing to work with. If we, there is no extra hairs around, we have no idea where your hairs are growing in. We have no idea how much your hairs grow. And it's good to know that when you come in, like this is how much growth I got in two months. This is how much I got in one month. There is no way that you are gonna be able to regrow and reshape your brows without going, being a little furry for a little bit. I promise you it's worth it. All of my clients who have, I've reshaped their brows. I mean, for some of them it took only six months, for some of them it took two years. So if you're one of my clients, you know, it can be pretty painful to look in the mirror and see how, how fuzzy they are, how badly you need a wax, but it is so worth it when you let them grow and you give your arch expert or your brow expert, whoever you go to, tons of, of hair to work with. I mean, it's really the only way for us to see because we don't know your hair specifically and everybody's different. Some people over tweezed when they were younger. Some people, you know, still over tweeze, but they still have growth. I'm somebody whose brows still grow in crazy. So you have to make sure that you let them grow in. I'm gonna give, these are my natural brows and I'm gonna come in and kind of show you that I decided maybe six months ago that I felt like the tails, so this is the front portion and this is your tail. I decided my tails were too thin for the front and I wanted them to be a little bit more balanced. So I have been growing in and waxing, you know, maybe like once a month. I've been filling in this whole section down here and this whole section down here and my brows are filling in. You just have to be patient and sometimes you might have a few hairs that look like they're out of place and like they miss them but you need those hairs there because one or two hairs every wax that you leave will eventually add up and then you've got a filled in brow you cannot fill a brow in and regrow it in one wax so get that idea out of your head it's going to take multiple sessions for 99 percent of the people some people just have crazy brows and they grow so fast and especially if you're younger if you're older it's gonna be a lot harder to grow your brows in so you really need to listen to these tips and you really need to kind of take that into consideration younger brows are going to fill in and reshape better because they haven't had years of tweezing and doing all the wrong shape and all of that. So if you're wondering why I keep looking down, I have my list of all my tips down here and the things that I don't want to forget to tell you. So that brings me to tip number three. I kind of mentioned it when I said that I wax mine once every four to five weeks, but that's because I'm in the regrowth phase. Once my brows are to where I want them, I'll probably do them every three weeks. But the reason that I do it every four to five weeks, and this may shock you to hear this because I do brow, I used to do so many brows for a living, but I do not tweeze a single hair in between brow waxes. And I tell all my clients to do this. This is so important for your sanity, but if you think about it, if you tweeze one or two hairs every day, they will grow back one or two hairs every single day. If you remove them all at once, they're gonna start growing back all at once. So you're able to go, once you get your hair, the three different cycles of hair kind of in sync and you're doing this process of not removing any hairs, you always remove them at the same time, you can go longer between waxes with absolutely no hair. As you can see, it's been probably like a week and a half maybe since I waxed mine, which if I was tweezing them every single day, I would have new hairs probably every two days popping up. But because I have mine trained, for lack of a better word, I have like a few hairs here and there that have kind of popped up, but like from far away, you cannot tell. And it's been a week and a half, almost two weeks. And I grew, I grow hair super fast. So the fact that this is all because I have trained my brows and I don't tweeze them in between waxes. I talk to everybody about this. I think it's truly the best thing that you could do for your brows because then you're not worried about them every morning when you're trying to get ready. Oh my gosh, I have one or two hairs that I need to take care of. I promise you, switch to this way and you will love it. So tip number four is going to be to be realistic. 
I know that this is maybe hard <laughs> with some people because we always want fuller, more beautiful brows. But the thing is, if you've spent years of over tweezing, you may not get the brow that you want. The other thing too, is you have to remember that the brow shape that you naturally have, like if you hadn't over tweezed, if you hadn't you know, changed the shape dramatically, the brow that you were kind of born with or had as a child is the shape that's best for you. For me personally, I've always had extremely arched brows, so an arched, um, an art shape looks really good on me because it looks the most natural and it complements my face shape. If you were born with super straight brows, do not go into a brow artist and ask them to arch them like crazy. You can enhance the arch when you're filling them in, which I'm gonna show you how to do in a minute, but do not ask them to wax an arch into a super straight brow because it's just not the best look for your face. You'll end up looking a little surprised probably, and they might end up thinning them out because your brows don't naturally want to do that and they've got to now take and change the shape of the brow. So I just highly recommend, and that's again goes back to tip number one of making sure that you find your right person. You want to make sure that they are, they can tell what the best shape for your face is and that they're enhancing the best shape because ultimately that's when your brows are going to look the best is when you are following your natural shape of what looks good on your face. So I can't even tell you how many times clients would come in and I'd be like, tell me about your brows. What do you love about them? What do you hate about them? And so on. That was always my first question. And they would always say, I want your brows, I want your brows. So many people would always be like, I want your brows, I want, and I would, I know, I know, but we can't, I can't put these brows on your face. We have to do what's best for your face. So we could, or I'd say like, what is it about my brows that you love? Is it because I have a nice arch? Is it because they're full? Is it like, what is it about them that you love? So again, going back to number one, make sure that you're, person is asking these kinds of questions because that's just ultimately going to help them find the best brow and you can really trust a person that's asking those questions because they're looking at these things. It's a very artistic thing eyebrows are because you're not just, it's not like normal waxing where you're just trying to remove all the hair, you know, if you're getting, you know, your underarms waxed or your legs waxed, you're just removing everything. This is very artistic and you're picking the right hairs. So, and it's crazy how one or two hairs can make the world of a difference. So also make sure that you get somebody who's not rushing, like don't go to a place where people get their nails done. Like your brows should never be like an add-on service somewhere when you're getting your hair done. I don't think. I think your brows should be, especially if you are looking to reshape your brows. Maybe if you have natural brows and you've been with somebody forever, like your hairstylist, they can do your brows, but if you're happy with them, but if you are trying to regrow your brows, make sure that you're going to a person dedicated to brows. So it's a bonus tip. Okay, so lastly, my tip number five is going to be to learn how to fill in your brows correctly. I'm gonna show you my favorite way to get filled in natural looking full brows that do not look like Instagram brows, super fake. They don't look, I always get told, oh my God, your brows are amazing. And to me, when somebody compliments me on my skin or my brows, they don't necessarily know that they're filled in or that I have foundation on. To me, that's the best. Rather than like somebody complimenting me and saying like, oh, your makeup is so beautiful. To me personally, I find that the compliments on you have really healthy skin, your skin is beautiful, mean much more because it shows that you're, I'm doing my makeup well where you, you, you can tell I'm wearing makeup, but like I really just look like I have healthy skin or I really just look like I have crazy filled in brows. And yes, I know I am blessed with a huge unibrow. I was kind of a tomboy when I was younger and my mom told me, do not over tweeze your eyebrows. You're going to love them. I hated my eyebrows when I was younger. They were super full. I have still to this day a full unibrow that I have to remove, but I, truly love my eyebrows now. So I, and it's because I've never over tweezed them. Thankfully I have had an old, older sister who experimented with beauty things and I kind of saw what to do and what not to do. But I'm gonna show you, these are my naked brows. They're again, one and a half weeks, two weeks out from being waxed. That's how long it's been. Normally I tint my own eyebrows when I wax them, but I didn't this time. So you're seeing pure naked brow. I've done all my makeup but my brows, which feels very strange to me. But I'm gonna show you how I fill in gaps. How, because you can see I have some gaps through here. I have, this one is still growing a little bit. Um, 
in right there, you can kind of see that I have like a little bald spot right there, this side. So my brows, let me tell you about how my brows used to look before I got really heavily into brows. So they used to start like right here. They, my tails were extremely, extremely tiny. They were like way smaller. This was super thick through here and then this was super tiny. And I never did anything on the top because I had always kind of heard don't touch the top, but like that's a myth. As long as you're not, as long as you're just cleaning up the baby hairs and you're not going too crazy and you're not like creating the shape too much from the top and like taking all the dark hairs, you're fine for doing the front. So I decided I was gonna change them. So when I started getting into brows, that's when I really grew in the front here. And I mean, you can, it really, you can't tell except for like sometimes when these hairs move, you can kind of tell that there's some hairs missing there. But for the most part, you cannot tell that these ever were starting in too far and that's because I let them grow. I went, you know, periods of time with my brows being very furry, but it was so worth it and I cannot recommend it enough. So, the two products that I'm gonna be personally using, I know it's a lot of people really like pomades and things, which if you don't have a lot of brow, that's totally fine. But if you have, I'd say this method is gonna work really well if you are somebody who has eyebrows there so it's not like you're missing part of your eyebrow or they're not like ridiculously skinny and you can do this method just on a smaller you know a thinner level but I think using these two products is really helpful to filling in where I need to fill in so I'm gonna be starting with Glossier Boy Brow so the reason I like to start with a tinted gel is because it kind of gives me an outline of my eyebrow some of the hairs down here are finer and through the front here and through there are a little bit finer. And this is going to kind of coat those hairs, make them look a little bit coarser, which is gonna give me, or allow me to see the shape a little bit better. So this is really important if you're somebody who kind of struggles with the shape, get them waxed regularly if you struggle with filling your brows in on your own because they're gonna give you, I used to call it like the blueprint to what you need to do and it makes it a lot easier for you at home to fill in your eyebrows. I never start in the front with any brow product. Don't ever go in front because if you, your brush has the most product when you first take it out of the tube. And if you go in right here, you're gonna put so much product right there. I always like to start kind of in the middle by the arch. So what I'm gonna do is short little strokes. I'm just going to start applying the boy brow. In my last video, I also talked about how I really do like boy brow better than gimme brow. I like the product texture. So, and then here in the front, I'm literally just combing straight up a little bit. And do you see how that, like, I, you can still see I have a few little bumps there, which is what we're gonna fill in. But to me, this looks so much more natural than a pencil. So why would you not try to fill in everything you can with something that makes it look like hair? And then go in where you really need extra help. So, I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I like using a gel too because it's gonna kind of comb your hair into place. You'll notice that I go backwards sometimes to kind of get some volume, almost like you're teasing the brow. And then lastly, we'll go in the front here, which will just accentuate the front there. So there. This for like, if you're looking for an everyday brow, that would be plenty. Hopefully you can see the difference on the camera, but I can definitely see how all of my lines look crisp, my brows look fuller, but it still looks super natural. I use the shade black, which may seem scary. I do have really dark hair, but they have, I wanna say they have three shades. Um, they have a brunette if you are brown and you're too scared to go with the black. I personally like this. Um, then, I have the Goof Proof Brow Pencil, but any tiny brow pencil like this will work. Um, I really like the NYX Micro Brow Pencils, and this is in the shade three, which is a little bit too, it's too light for me, but I can just, I just use a little bit more product. It was sent to me by Benefit, thank you. So, that's why it's not the right shade. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in right here in this area where my tail's kind of having a hard time growing in and just gently fill that in. I'm 
also I like to accentuate my arch a little bit more so I literally just filled that in if I do anything in the front it's literally just to sharpen up that line right there I literally will draw a little line line right there depending on what the brows are doing in that bald spot sometimes I'll put a little one there and then this is your spoolie this is your best friend if you are filling in your eyebrows and you are not using a spoolie after your brows are probably looking too filled in and too fake the spoolie is just has no product on it it's just designed to blend the hair so you're brushing I'm gonna brush up to blend that fade that line but do you see how that just compared to the other one there's just a little bit of a sharper line under there which makes the brow look a little fuller and then I always brush through here just to soften anything. So if you feel like you put too much product on, you can always go in and do a little bit more. Now on this side, the tail's kind of doing the same thing. So we're just gonna add a little bit through there. We're gonna sharpen up that arch and then draw that line in on the bottom. And use the spoolie to gently blend up so that you don't have as obvious of a line there. Bam. And that's how easy it is to fill in your brows. Now, if you are new to filling in your brows, you are new to growing them in, you're not quite sure about the shape of your eyebrows, one thing that I recommend is right where your arch is, kind of pulling up. Do you see how when I pull that up, it really accentuates the arch of my brow? That can be really helpful when you are new to filling in your brows. And if you aren't quite sure where it is, if you do this and then you can start, it makes it a lot easier for you to kind of see and visualize the shape, which is really important. So that is how I fill in my brows. You can see it did not take hardly any time at all because majority of it was with this Glossier Boy Brow. I'll leave a link down below if you've never purchased from Glossier. You can get 10% off your first order, which is really helpful with my coupon code. I highly recommend it. As you can see, I think my brows look really natural. They're not like too stuck down. I don't like some gels will make them look very wet and stuck down and I don't think they look stuck down. They're not opaque. They're not too heavy in the front. They're just framing my face and doing exactly what we want them to do. So I hope that this was helpful for you. I hope that you learned something about eyebrows. I hope you kind of learned where my head is at if you've ever been a client of mine and like wondered how I do everything. Kind of spilling some of my secrets, but it's worth it because I want you guys to have the best brows that you can. If you have any questions about anything that I mentioned, please make sure that you comment down below, like this video, subscribe, especially like if you like this video on brows. I can always do more specific brow videos if you want. I'm gonna give you another close up again so you can see. They look really cool tone, which is also really important. That's something I didn't mention. So it's really important that you don't, unless you have red hair or you have really warm hair and you want your brows to kind of mimic that or you have naturally warm brows, generally you're gonna wanna go a little bit cooler than warmer because nobody really has warm brows warm brows can look very fake on somebody unless they have red hair so I that's another reason that I really like the black it's that it's very cool toned and it's not warm at all and sometimes you can I definitely recommend swatching a brow pencil on your hand because this one does not turn very warm but some brow pencils will pull red or pull orange when you put them on the hand um, so make sure that when you that you're swatching them so you can kind of see what it does on you to make sure that it's not gonna be too warm so those are all my brow tips I hope you enjoyed this if you want top five tips for something else related to makeup or skincare let me know down below again like this video and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time Have a wonderful day.